Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. It's former Chief Marketing Officer and author of Emotion by Design, Creative Leadership Lessons from a Life at Nike, Greg Hoffman joins us now. Greg, good morning, and you are so welcome to Business Matters. Carl, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, looking forward to the conversation. Greg, you started life in Nike as an intern and followed that right through to becoming the chief marketing officer of one of the best known brands in the world. How did that happen? Well, yes, I guess you could say I had two dominant passions in life as a child, art and sport. And as I moved through my early life, I always thought I would have to make a choice between the two, you know, a career in design and art or a career in sport and the business of sport. And it just so happened through this internship that I didn't have to make that choice because, of course, Nike has mastered the art of storytelling and bringing immersive experiences through the platform of sport. And so I was able to combine my two passions, and certainly um, that is ultimately responsible for the fact that I stayed there almost two decades. And how would you define Nike's approach to marketing? Well, I, I have always said this, is that Nike looks to infuse and surround every output from the brand with emotion, right? All the way down to the swoosh and its slogan, Just Do It, to the stories it expresses Nike's approach to marketing is making sure it's stirring the emotions in its audience and most importantly, developing the confidence in their audience and empowering them to achieve their aspirations and goals, right? And so that's, you know, I think a big lesson for listeners is so much of branding is focused on how you want your audience to think about you as the brand. But another big part of it, and a way Nike approached it over the years, was ensuring that you're also spending time thinking about how you want your consumer to feel when they interact with you and their ability to achieve great things. So talk us through the development process that Nike went through in developing that brand, the swoosh, and of course, the Just Do It tagline. Well, you're asking questions during the process uh, of marketing. Um, If you're developing a campaign or a logo or a slogan or even an Instagram post, you're still asking the question, what are we inviting uh, the audience to be a part of with this story, with this communication? Essentially, um, you're creating a movement of potential, if you will, that you're inviting the consumer to be a part of. And of course, with Nike, that was around athleticism and sport. For other companies, it's whatever their expertise is and what they deliver into the world. You're also, again, asking that question of how you want people to feel. Hence my book, Emotion by Design. You're being intentional about the not only the impressions you want to create in the consumer's mind about your brand, but also kind of instilling um, that idea of anything is possible, right? And so essentially in terms of marketing your products and services are essentially a gateway to you know a a, a better future whether you're an athlete or or um, a gardener or a cook you know that's the invitation to be better than you were the day yesterday and of course during your time at nike you had some world famous marketing campaigns but which one stands out to you well i i really look back at the London Olympics in 2012. And while the world was watching, of course, the best athletes in the world compete on the world stage, um, we went a different route and we celebrated athletes around the world. And how we did that is early on in the process, we discovered that there were 29 different Londons uh, around the world, towns called and cities called London, not London, Nairobi, London and the U.S., et cetera. And so we really highlighted the everyday athletes like you and I that were having our own version of Olympics each day. And that's what it means to be, you know, a a brand that um, creates an invitation for everyone to participate. And that's the spirit of Just Do It. How would you describe a brand? Well, first and foremost, it starts with literally naming a product, right? Um, is is branding and therefore 
you become a brand as soon as you name a product, a place, an individual, et cetera, but yet you have not created any awareness or um, an impression out in the world. So branding, after you've created a brand, and, and of course, branding is the art and science of creating uh, the impression and the associations in your brand in a positive way with your audience. And you do that by practicing brand management and marketing, right? The activities that are going to build that uh, impression and position in the world. And I keep going back to it is an art and a science, right? You know, science representing a lot of the data and analytics, the sig signals that you're getting from consumer behavior and marketplace dynamics that inform your decision making. The art is equally as important because oftentimes it's the creative storytelling and experiences that you bring into the world and the images you create and the words you use that are responsible for creating the strong emotional bonds with your audience. And it all starts with creating a brand name. So what advice have you got for doing that? Yes. I mean, it's, and again, probably one of the most difficult pursuits, right? Because you are looking to create a name that is both distinctive, right? Stands out in a crowded field is also intuitive. You know, oftentimes it's that holy grail when you create a brand that a name that also explains what your company does in the most intuitive way. And finally, transferable and uh, translatable across different regions and countries, right? Because at the end of the day, your brand hopefully has the type of success where it can grow over, the, over time. The most important thing to do early on when you're naming your brand is volume. Make sure you, you, you don't get stuck on your initial idea that you create a continuum of, of names, and then you get objective voices in the room, right, that can really help you, um, you know, get the decision down uh, to two or three best uh, best directions. And in relation to positioning that brand, then what's involved? Well, positioning is you're doing two exercises early on. First, because it's, it's about points of parity and points of difference, right? So you're making two lists. One is there's no product that is so unique that it is not, uh, does not share the same traits as other products within its category, right? There's always points of, of parity, right? So you need to write those down. Once you do that, you also then need to, what, like, what makes your, your, your product or service stand out? How is it satisfying the needs of your audience, whether they're rational or emotional, uh, in ways that your competitors are not doing? And you need to write those out, right? And from that, from those lists of points of differences, you will create your brand positioning. Then how do you go about building that brand identity? Yeah, really great question, right? And I, I look at your brand identity um, as it's your brand foundation or your brand frame. And oftentimes that identity starts with your, your logo and logo type, your brand color, uh, your, your brand typeface. And as I say, um, the stronger you, you create that brand frame, the more powerful the image within the frame, right? That painting of your brand will shine, and that's your story inside that. So your brand identity has to house and carry the weight of your brand's story and its lifelong aspirations, not only of the brand, but your consumers. So make sure you take the time um, to, to define um, what what colors and what typography and all these details that sometimes people just say, well, I'll get to that later. And I'm here to tell you that it's important to spend that time early on because ultimately um, it is the platform for which you present your products. And as you know, like the swoosh, your logo is the punctuation of everything you say. And I think one of the greatest challenges with creating a brand is actually in the personality around that. So essentially, that is your, your brand voice, right? So a brand personality is, you know, what are the characteristics and traits that you believe embody your brand? And just like a human being, there isn't just one or two. There are many, 
right? Our, our persona, what makes us unique is a mosaic. And it's important to understand that, you know, over the life of your brand, you're going to exercise your voice in a variety of different ways. And it's important not to use the same tone of voice over and over again, because just like a human being, if you, if you're, saying the same thing and speaking the same way over and over again, you might become boring or even worse, annoying, and your audience may go somewhere else. So make sure you define the characteristics of your brand. And then two, make sure you're, you're differentiating the tone of your voice throughout a given year as you're telling your story to the consumer. And if all of that is done right, you're then going to build excellent brand equity you know, the first thing you're trying to do as a young brand is create brand awareness, right? And once you kind of start to invite people into your brand and and get them to take notice, um, of course, then you want to make sure that you're top of mind in, in, in their mind when they're starting to make decisions on which brand they want to start a relationship with and which products they want to create. And so, it's important to build that equity, right? And to make sure everything you're creating, whether it's, it's again, a social media post, um, an in-store display that's marketing your product, or, or a YouTube video, all of these things should be additive. They should, should continue to build equity and strength in your brand, right? And it's, it's just compounding effect over time. And it's really important that you're not creating things that are eroding your brand equity, right? That they're multiplying it, right? And you don't want indifference. So make sure you're asking those questions of why would anyone care about what I'm, what we're communicating right now? Oh, I know that you're very strong on the power of storytelling and branding. So what advice have you got to businesses this morning in relation to how to go about crafting their story and who they need to engage with to achieve that? It's a great question. And the first part of creating stories that will be remembered, right? Because I think you want to be in the business of creating stories that will never be forgotten. And it starts by in the early stages of the process, again, whether it's a short you know, um, TikTok video, or it's a long form piece of, of film content. Um, it all starts with, well, what, what is, what is the insight or truth that you're trying to reveal about your brand or your product? And to do that, again, it gets back to that idea of empathy, seeing what others see, but finding what others don't. You can't just, you can't just communicate things that are obvious and that are observations. You need to get to real insights and truths because once you have that great truth, then you can have all sorts of fun figuring out the most profound way to reveal that to the world, right? So that, that's, that's really important. And of, of course, for us at Nike over the years, you know, look, as, as fans of the sport, our athletes, you know, we're all seeing what's on the surface right? As we're watching our favorite team. So it's important to get underneath the surface, peel back the layers to find some unique truth about the game, right? That you can then reveal that inspires people, that engages people, and that will create a type of story that will truly be remembered. It's a really powerful line, I have to say. Nike has been using brand ambassadors very successfully for as long as I can remember. We're now seeing lots of small and medium-sized businesses engage in using influencers. What advice have you got for them in that regard? Just make sure you can connect, you can connect the dots, right? It's really important when it comes to the arena of influence, right? And trying to be, be influential in culture with your brand by who you choose to partner with or which new social media platforms you choose to express yourself with. Um, I have this mantra that I live by, which says, don't chase cool. And remembering that your authenticity is your cultural currency. So you want to make sure there's a shared passion between what you sell and what your brand purpose is and which ambassadors you partner with, right? I think that's really, really important. And it's important for your audience to see that connection, right? Because 
um, consumers are, are professionals when it comes to exposing inauthenticity. They know when, when a collaboration um, is, is, you know, is not on solid ground. So um, make sure you first understand, you know, why, why you exist as a brand and what you value and what your values are and make sure that mirrors with who you're going to partner with. Now, it's well recognised that Nike employ the best marketeers in the world and have done for so many years. So when it came to hiring marketing staff, what did you look for in them? Well, it's a it's great question. And there are two to three characteristics that rose to the top in terms of what we looked for. And I've already spoken about one, empathy. But curiosity was another that that insatiable appetite to find inspiration, um, you know, I, I have this this line, you know, get outside yourself. People that are willing to look out into the world and bring the world into their own and share that with everyone around them to create this collective curiosity, I think is really, really important. And then this idea of collaboration and being able to play as a team is extremely important, right? Because, you know, you're, you're looking to create creative chemistry, or as they say, radical creative collaboration to achieve the types of, of, you know, uh, distinctive experiences and storytelling and campaigns in the world. So, uh, and then finally, I would say this commitment to obsessing the details, right? Um, does the individual hold the smallest details to the highest standards? And of course, there are so many channels, both online and offline, available to businesses to distribute their content, their advertising, their marketing collateral through today. Sometimes I feel that businesses are now going for quantity over quality. What are your thoughts on that? Great question, and I'll, I'll, just, I'll just put it out there like this, because I believe words matter. So if you can have a mindset internally within your brand, whether it's small or large, that you're not creating content to distribute, you're creating your brand story to share with the world, there's a difference. Making sure that everything you're doing, because the word content is pretty broad, but when you say you're expressing your brand story, no, no matter how small or large uh, the output is, that's quite powerful. And when you use the word share versus distribute, all you're asking your team to do, because you're right, they're moving at great speed. They're moving at the speed of the consumer, and we must do that as an industry. But with that said, you also want everyone to respect the craft. And if you look at brands like Apple, you look at a lot of the fashion brands, you look at Nike, um, they understand that what they're actually doing is revealing different aspects of their brand story. And oftentimes today, it's co-created with their audience. And Greg, on your journey to becoming the chief marketing officer with Nike for many years, who inspired you along the way? It's a great question, and I had many. And of course, to, to work alongside all these athletes and teams and coaches um, was, was of, of great inspiration. Um, and certainly, you know, I tell this story because it, it, it is a big point for me is that in my college apartment, I had this famous iconic poster. It's called the Michael Jordan Wings poster, this black and white poster of Michael that was life size. And underneath that was a William Blake quote underneath his image that said, no bird soars too high if he soars with his own wings. So imagine looking at that poster every day I got out of class. And then a year later, I was working for the very individual that designed that poster, right? So I tell that story to say, well, it's both historical voices, William Blake, it's contemporary uh, individuals like Michael Jordan, who is setting the world on fire with, with his exploits on the basketball court. And then it's my first boss who decided to dis defy conventional ways at that time that por posters were being created and literally created a piece of art. Through your work at Nike, you got a great insight into Michael Jordan, one of the greatest athletes that we've ever seen. What stood out about him? I think it's just the level of, of passion, commitment, 
and will to to improve, right? I think the best athletes, um, just like the best leaders, uh, never rest on their success, right? I think that's really important. And the other thing I want to point out here is um, with with Michael Jordan is that I always look back at the my favorite commercial of all time from 1997, the Jordan failure commercial, where he said, I've missed 9,000 shots. I've lost 300 games. And I've been, been looked to to take the game-winning shot 26 times, and I've missed. But because I've failed over and over again, that's why I succeed. And so that's where I draw inspiration from these athletes that one, they're always looking to be better than they were the day before, but they also are, are putting themselves in position. They're willing to take risks um, to shoot the shot when it's their time. And um, I just think in life, that's, that's uh, something we can, we can all take uh, insights from. And Greg, finally, what does the future of marketing hold for us? Well, of course, it's it's ever changing uh, in real time before us, right? Because you know all the conversations we have today about Web 3.0 and uh, the metaverse and NFTs, right? But at the end of the day, uh, the one the one truth is that I believe the most successful marketing is marketing that serves, marketing that serves the pr- purpose of empowering your audience to achieve their aspirations and and dreams in both a meaningful and inspiring way. Now, it just so happens that the mediums that the, our audience, that our consumer is choosing to use um, are, are changing and you have to meet the audience where they are. They will not come to you. That's the most important. So where they are choosing to engage with brands is where you must play. And so it's really important within your brand team, whether you're a small or large company, that you're in the conversation, that you're looking out at emerging platforms and capabilities, because today the consumer has, you know, they're in charge. Um, They are in control of the relationship and you have to respect that. And so it's, again, it's remembering who you are, why you exist, and what your promise is to your audience, and at the same time, recognizing where they're choosing uh, to engage with you. Well, Greg Hoffman, former Chief Marketing Officer with Nike and author of Emotion by Design, Creative Leadership Lessons from a Life at Nike. Many thanks for joining us on this morning show, and we wish you every continued success. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. 